Hallelujah. Do you have your Bible? Do you have your iPad with the Bible inside? You have your phone with your Bible inside. If it has a Bible, if it doesn't have the Bible, don't lift it up. But if it has a Bible, lift it up like that. Let the Lord see the Bible in it. And let's say this is my Bible. This is the Word of God. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. And I have what it says I have. Shout this morning. I'm about to receive this ever-living, incorruptible, infallible word of the living God. Speak to yourself. Say, I will never be the same again. If you can't shake your head and say, never, never, never. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can we read into the, into the word of God? Exodus chapter 11 and verse 7. Exodus 11 and verse 7. This is a message God gave to me when we were closing the year. I intended to speak to you the second Sunday of January, but it never happened. But thank God I will speak to you this morning. Second, Exodus 11 and verse 7. Exodus 11 and verse 7. Those who had me on the eve, of the, the eve of the new year will remember a few points that I'll be mentioning as I speak in this message. It says, And not a dog shall growl against any of the people of Israel. And if you believe that, you can say amen. amen. Now put your name at the place of the people of Israel. Let's read together and say, But not a dog shall growl against Mulema. You can put your name there. Against me, if you can. Neither man or beast, that you may know that the Lord makes a distinction between Egypt and Israel. And I'm calling my message, the Lord who makes a distinction. Amen. Particularly the year of restitution, year 2021. The Lord who makes a distinction. And if you would forget everything I'm talking about before I pray, remember the word, not a dog shall growl against any of the people of Israel. The word growl there means not a dog. I wish I had a dog somewhere up there. Not a dog shall bark against any of the people of Israel. What a promise. And what a word. Oh, the dog has come. Thank you, media. There is no dog that will growl over you or growl against you. In the year 20... If you believe that, lift up your hand and say, no dog. no dog. Can you shout that? No dog, no dog. shall growl against me in this year 2021. Father, thank you for your word and bless your people as we share together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And be seated. Amen. Now, I will rush in my sermon. So please take your Bible with you and take a pen if you would. I will point three things that are very important in this sermon. I will begin by saying this was a statement that God made to Moses when he was preparing Israel for a new chapter in their lives. God spoke this word to Moses when he was preparing Israel for a new chapter in their lives. These were the last words that God spoke as he gave Pharaoh the last opportunity or the last chance to release his people Israel from the land of Egypt. Now put that at the back of your mind. As he was readying them to start the journey, God gave them the promise, and that was the promise he gave them. He said, he told Moses, I've dealt with Pharaoh. I do not know how many months it took when they were going through those plagues. Some people think it was a year. Others think it was more than two years. I don't know. But I can tell you, Moses didn't just leave Sinai. I mean, leave uh, the place of uh, his uncle. Was it his uncle? His father-in-law walked into Israel after the following day he began talking to, 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 to Pharaoh. No, it, it took a process. And I do not know how long it took. But the Bible tells me as he, was prom as he was readying them to start their journey to the land of, of, of Canaan that he had promised them, he spoke and he says, Not a dog shall growl against any of them, neither man nor beast. Now, this was a guarantee of a smooth sail, I believe. God was guaranteeing Israel as you start this journey, it will not be a journey of struggle. And I want to mention this to us. As we begin the year, I know we have already done the month of January. But as we continue in this year, may this year be a year without struggle for you. Those who know where to say amen, they put it there, Pastor Ken, you are a good man. There will be no struggle as you begin this year. He was telling them, look, I'm giving you a guarantee. You've gone through so much in 2020. 
telling Egypt, I mean Israel, you've gone so much through the land of Egypt, 430 years. But as you begin this journey, there is no dog that will bark at you. Of course, he's a metaphorical figure he's using here to tell them there is nobody ever who will stand against you or there will be no trouble that will come your way or there will be no fear that will come your way as you begin this journey to the land where I'm taking you, the land of Egypt, I mean the land of Canaan. And he made a statement that I want us to use this statement to bring out three points that I will quickly mention. When you go home in the comfort of your house, you go and read those points slowly and carefully. He told, just, I mean, he told Israel, I will make a distinction between you and them. And I can tell you this, God wants to make a distinction between his people and the rest of the other people. You didn't hear me. You know, we, we, we are not the same. I can tell you believers are not the same with everybody else. If you are born again, you are not the same with any other person. And I can assure you, Israel wasn't just like any Egyptians. These were a special people whom God had called to himself. People that were living in Egypt at God's own command. And for 430 years, they'd been under bondage. So the Lord is saying, now is the time for me to distinguish who you are. Believe me, this man had been in this land until they became like the own, I mean, they became like the people of the land. You know, when you live in Kenya and you've been here for more than three decades or uh, probably 50 years, you are a Kenyan. Their children were Egyptians. They were born in Egypt. In America, if you give birth to a child when you're in the U.S., he becomes an American citizen. Am I right? As long as he's born in that country, he's a citizen of that nation. Meaning these men were citizens of Egypt. And as much as they looked and they walked and they ate and they did things like the Egyptians, the Lord said, I will make a distinction between you and them. And it is this distinction that will make no dog back at you. The distinction between Egypt and Israel included instituting a new calendar year. So the Lord said from today, even as I make this distinction between me and you, I will begin you on a new page. They were used to the, 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 the Egyptian calendar. But God said, I'm going to give you a new calendar. Meaning, you will not go by the calendar of the Egyptians anymore. I'll, I'll give you a new calendar year that you will start with. In my view, we had the message here last Sunday when Pastor Joyce was preaching here. And she mentioned to us that God is a God who begins new seasons. Isn't it? What God was telling them, I'm beginning a new season for you. The ordinary season is gone. And I can tell you, church, today, we may be living in the season that we are in today, but for God's people, God brings us into a new season. When everybody else is saying is inflation, God changes it to become something else. When everybody is complaining that things are not working, God makes things to begin working for you because he will make a distinction between you and them. So he told Israel, I will begin a new calendar year for you. Can we go to Exodus chapter 12, verse 1 and verse 2 quickly? I will read now scriptures. Oh God, I've got only 10, I mean, I mean 20 minutes here. Chapter 12 and verse 1 and verse 2. It says this. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall be for you the beginning of months. After he had said, I will make a distinction. He said, this month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. And I'll say to the children of God who are here this morning, God is going to begin a new season for you. It may not matter how the, the last year season was in your life. It may have been a very hard time for you. It could have been a very hard season in your life. But I want to speak to you as a servant of God and tell you, as the Lord makes a distinction in your life, he'll begin a new season for you. If you believe it, you say amen. amen. Let me move on. The word distinction, what does it mean? I will explain here in a few words. The word distinction, when he says, I will make a distinction. I said, I'm calling my sermon here, the Lord who makes a distinction. The word distinction simply means this. Let me read it here. It simply means a recognizing of or noting of differences. A recognizing or noting of differences. Let me move on. A condition of being different. In other words, as a believer, you are not like others. What God was saying, I will make sure they recognize there is a difference between you and the man you sit with in your office. The neighbor who is in your neighborhood. 
The people who work with you in your community, there is a difference. It simply means it is a discrimination made between things as different. A special regard or a favoritism. That's the meaning of the word distinction there. And you can check, check it up in the dictionary. Let me move on. To bring about this distinction, there were three things. And I'll go to those three things. I'll mention one in five minutes, another one in second, five, another five minutes, then I'll finish. He says, I will bring this distinction. There were three things in which God's people, Israel, as they left Egypt, clearly began to show the distinction between them and the rest of the people. Believe me, God did three things that were very, very powerful. And I want to translate these things in our day today. And I want to say this to all of us here. If the Lord does those three things in your life, there will be a distinction between you and the rest of the people. In order for us to restitute all things that we have lost in the past, these three things mark a believer as distinct from the rest of the other people. And I want to begin with the thing number one. The first thing which God did he gave them a mark of distinction, which I'm calling here um, the mark of Passover. The mark of Passover. And every believer needs a mark of Passover in your life. You may wonder what is Pastor Mlema talking about? What, what does Passover mean? It means, it, means, it means this. The mark of Passover was a mark which God gave them to distinguish between who are the Israelites and who are actually the Egyptians. So many things had happened. But for, for the first time, God made a clear distinction. Who was an Israelite and who was actually an Egyptian? How did he do that? In chapter 11 of the book of Exodus, and I will mention what that mark means in our day, chapter 11 and verse 1, it says, And the Lord said to Moses, listen to me, he says, Yet one more plague more I will bring upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Then he mentions words that I love in that scripture. He says, Afterwards, can somebody say afterwards? That's when distinction begins. Listen, sometimes God will allow things to happen in your life, but there's a moment when God says, enough is enough. Amen. And I can speak this, I can tell you, in 2021, I want God to speak to my heart and tell me, Pastor Mlema, enough is enough. Amen. Could he speak to you today and tell you what you've gone through is enough? Amen. He spoke and he went on to say, afterwards, he will let you go from here. When he lets you go, he will drive you away completely completely. He's not going to hold you back anymore. And I can tell you the devil is not going to hold you back again from the graces that God has in store for you. The mark of the Passover was basically the mark of the lamp. Those who know the Bible, let me quickly explain here. God told them to go and take a lamp. Every Israelite take a lamp. Slaughter the lamp. And there were two things about, about that lamp that God told them to do. That's why next Sunday is very important for you. I know believers take communion lightly, but let me tell you, communion has power. Amen. Anybody who is a believer who understands the power of the Holy Communion, I'm telling you he'll be looking forward for communion every month. Amen. You didn't hear me? Amen. So he told them, take a lamp. And there were two elements in the lamp. Element number one was the blood, the blood of the lamp. He says, take the blood of the lamp and sprinkle it on the doorpost of your house. Because when the devil, when the spirit of death will begin moving, when the angel of death will come, he will look for a distinction. Amen. And what is the distinction? The Can somebody say the blood? The blood. People, worship team, now when you come here, sing about the blood. As I close this service. You know, he says, I will be checking. I will be looking for a distinction. And wherever I see the blood, where I see the blood, can somebody say where I see the blood? I will pass over. Amen. That's where the word pass over comes in. So when the Lord is walking in Nairobi and is walking in Islam, he's looking for the blood. And the distinction between you and your neighbor is the blood. Amen. When you have the blood of Jesus in your life, you are different. Amen. It's only this side that is listening to my sermon. But when you are normal, like any other person, let me tell you, there were even some Israelites who became normal. Any Israelite who did not put the blood on his doorpost, his firstborn died. And we are believers today who, who live normal. Can I shock you? There were Egyptians who got delivered that night. This way in the Bible, when they are crossing and they are living and they are in the, in, in, in the wilderness, we have a group of people called the mixed multitudes. Who are those? Those were Egyptians who understood the God of Israel. Who were in communion with the people of Israel. So when they saw the blood, they also took the blood and put on their doorposts. And indeed, their firstborns were spared. Because God will make a what? A distinction. 
Can I move on? That was the first distinction that he made. And the second thing was the body of that lamp. And he says, eat the body of the lamp. Eat it all. Finish. Eat everything. People don't know. The blood signified sin. But the body signified your physical healing. It means when you eat the blood and you, you drink the blood and you eat the body, even your body, your physical healing is guaranteed. Amen. You didn't get me. By the way, when I'm eating communion here, you know what I say when I'm, st I'm standing there? I say, Father, for the sins I've committed, forgive me. Then I say, and for my body, heal me. Amen. When I'm eating that piece of bread, it's like I'm eating a tablet. By the way, I say, Lord, make this piece of bread, bread healing for my body. And I can believe God for the whole of next, I mean the whole of next month or this month to walk in good health. Amen. Amen. Can, I, can we continue reading? Amen. Chapter 12, my goodness. Chapter 12 and verse 30, verse 32. Can we go there quickly? Chapter 12, Exodus. We're in the book of Exodus. Chapter 12, verse 30 to verse 32. It says, and Pharaoh rose up in the night. That is after the blood. And after the angel of death had passed on. And, and all his servants and all the Egyptians... Look, everybody has woken up, including the servants and the Egyptians, the armies. And there was a great cry in Egypt. And there was not a house where somebody was not dead. Then he says, and he summoned Moses and Aaron by night. Not in the morning, by night. And he said, rise up. Can somebody help me here? Read with me. He said what? Rise up from among my people. In other words, you are not my people anymore. There is a distinction. Are you listening to me? You know, the devil must understand we don't belong to him. You know, people think, people think that the devil is chasing us. Is that who are chasing the devil? Is that who rebuke demons, by the way? He says, rise up from among my people. And he says, both you and your, the people of Israel, and go, serve the Lord among, serve the Lord your God, as you have said. And look, there were no limitations. He says, and take your flocks and your hearts, as you have said, and be gone. Then he says, and bless me also. That's sarcastic. Please bless me. Because the Pharaoh was completely fed up. He had reached a point where he could no longer hold on Israel. Because Israel was distinct. Can I move to point number two? The rest you can read on your own. Point number two, we had the, the mark that I'm calling here, a mark of distinction, the mark of provision. Provision. And I can speak to us this morning. As much as you have the mark of the blood on you, God will provide for you in the year 2021. Amen. This is not going to be a year of luck. This is going to be a year of plenty. Amen. If you believe it, lift up your hand and say, I believe. Amen. Let me tell you something. is What you confess is what you get. Pastor Ken told us here the other day. If you're going to be a person who is always negative, you will receive negative. But if you're going to be a person who's going to be positive, every word you believe that is in the Bible, you begin confessing it and believing it and working in it, I promise you, 2021 will be a year of provision. Are you with me? Let me move on. 2022, the year of provision. Israel sojourned to the land of Egypt. When they sojourned to the land of Egypt, their sojourning was orchestrated by God himself. Israel never just volunteered to go to the land of Egypt. No. They went because God had orchestrated it from the beginning. You are not in the world by accident. Can I see how many of you chose to come in the world? How many of you decided I will be born in the world? If I was given a choice, I would have told God, make me an angel. But God, by choice, he made you. And you are here by choice. And I can tell you, because you are his, he will make sure he delivers you from the things of the world by his own hand. Well, how do I know this? If you look in Genesis chapter 15, Genesis 15 from verse 13 to verse 16, quickly. I read this one, I make, I make my final submission and I'll be done. Genesis chapter 15 and verse 13 to 16. It was orchestrated by God. They were not in Egypt by, by choice. No, they were there because God understood they will be there and he will move them from there. Why am I mentioning this point as you look for that scripture? You are not in that condition you are in by choice. I can tell you. Nobody chooses to become to, to lack. I've never seen anybody deciding I want to be poor. In fact, if you are given a choice, you won't be even sitting in this church. Some of you would be sitting in huge cathedrals somewhere else. If you are given a choice. Or living in some place somewhere else where you believe it's very, very wonderful for you to live in there. But can I encourage you, even God having allowed you to be here, he has a provision for you. 
It may not matter how tough, how difficult it is with your life and with your job and with whatever you are doing. I have a word for you. I want you to know God loves you. And there is something he will do for you. Let me move quickly here. Chapter, th- chapter 15, verse 13 to 16, Genesis. It says, and the Lord said to Abraham, he says, Abraham, know for a certain that your offsprings, Israel, will be sojourners in the land that is not theirs. And there will be their servants there, the Bible says. And, 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 they, and they will be servants there. And they will be afflicted for 400 years. But I love but. Can somebody say but? What does but say? But I will bring judgment on the nation that they serve. Then he says, and afterwards. Can somebody say afterwards? What will happen afterwards? They shall come out with what? Great possessions. As for you, he tells Abraham, you will go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried in good old age. They shall come back here in the fourth generation for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. This is something God told Abraham 400 years before Israel went into the land of captivity. But look at the promise. Me, I don't look at whatever was going to happen to them. The promise was when they return. They are going to return when they have what? Those who read the Bible, they have what? Ah, come on, come on, come on. Do we read? Are you with me? They will return having what? Great possessions. In other words, as you go, though you are going to be afflicted, you are not coming back empty-handed. This is a year of what? Restitution. It may not matter how last year has been, you can believe God. To bring you out of whatever you've been going through with the great what? Possession. How did God make a distinction between Israel and this man? Israel, I believe, the mark of provision was evidenced by the exchange of wealth that took place on the night of their departure. Can I surprise you? You can become rich overnight. Can you imagine, I'm sleeping, in, my, I'm sleeping in, uh, in Embakasi. And the next day, I have keys of my house in Runda. How, how many of you believe that can happen? Some don't believe. How many believe that can happen? It can happen. You can today be what you are, but tomorrow you can be somebody different. And it did happen to Israel. Overnight, this man became rich. How do I know that? Psalms 105, verse 37, quickly. Psalms 105, verse 37, it says this. And he brought them out of his, his he, brought, he brought out Israel. Help me. Can we read together? Psalms 105, verse 37. Please read with me. It says what? Then he brought out Israel with what? Help me. With what? Silver and gold. And there was none among them. The tribes who did what? Stumbled. It means there was none among them who was feeble. That, that's not enough. I will explain. Look at Exodus chapter 11, verse 2 to verse 3. Quickly. Exodus 11, 2 to 3. I love this, this portion of scriptures. You know, when I read them, I feel so nice. I, I begin encouraging myself. When I have no money in my pocket, I know tomorrow money will be there. Amen. Huh? Amen. Okay, let's read that one. Then if Moses tells them, now you speak to the, the hearing of the people. Speak to the hearing. God is telling Moses. Speak to the hearing of the people. As they ask that they ask every man of his neighbor and every woman of her neighbor for what? Silver and gold, jewelry, and anything they want. Then he says, and the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants, and in the sight of the people. Can you jump to me to chapter 12, verse 35? To verse 36. At the end of their moving, Pharaoh chasing them out of Egypt. Look at verse 35, chapter 12, Exodus. Verse 35. And I love that. Verse 35 to verse 36. Can we read together? It says, the people of Israel had also done as Moses had told them. He had said, on the night when you are leaving, go to your neighbor and borrow gold and silver. I don't know how many of you can go to your neighbors. In other words, he was telling us, we leave him because we go where? Keleleshua, and we borrow. Gold and? If you're working there, you go to your boss there. And you tell him, sir, can I have some gold and some silver? Then God will give favor to that boss. And the boss will tell you, how much do you want? You will say, I, I want about a, a mil, a, a, a 10 million shillings. And he'll tell you, I'm just giving you the whole account. You withdraw whatever you want. Then the Holy Ghost tells you, withdraw everything. You know, the Bible doesn't give you details. 
some, some of you people think they were being given a little gold. And, no, those guys picked everything that was there. I will show you in scripture. Can we read what it says there? As Moses had told them, for they had asked the Egyptians for what? For silver, gold, jewelry, and for what? You can imagine the best of the clothes. The guy who was working in Pharaoh's palace went to Pharaoh and told him, can I have some clothes? And Pharaoh gave him the best of his robes. Some of you are looking at me with the eyes as though I'm telling you a story. It's true. Well, you don't know how to ask. You go to your boss and ask him. By the way, even the chariots they used, they were given. It says, can I, can I use your chariot, uh, boss? I, I, we are going to the mountain to go and pray. Give me your chariot. They were given Mercedes Benz. They were given Prados. You're not listening. Because you're not saying amen, you guys. Some of you, you want to remain with your vids and with your is it scarlet or starlet. But let me tell you, go to your neighbor and look at that thing that is just, that does, mm, and ask him, can I have this one, please, for tonight? I just want to go to worship the Lord. I'm bringing it back. Listen, what happened there? Look, go to verse 37, 36, and see what the Bible says, verse 36. It says, and the Lord did what? Had given the people what? Favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they let them have what they asked. It, what they asked. What are you asking? Year 2021, I want to restitute. Whatever I lost in 2020, Nitauliza. You didn't hear me? If it's your job, go and ask for your job. You didn't get my point. If it was your promotion, if it was due last year, go and ask for it. Tell your boss, listen, boss, last year I was supposed to get an increment. There was corona, I want it now. He'll ask you how much, how much do you want. Then quote whatever you want. Listen how the Bible ends. It says, and thus. Can somebody say thus? What does thus mean? You only, you only King James. For that reason, what happened? They plundered the Egyptians. You go and look at the word plunder in the Bible. It means you take everything and miserably leave the person miserable. That's how it happened. Overnight, there was an exchange. Can I tell you? The, the mark of provision, the mark of provision made a distinction. Those who are rich, God drew a line. He says, today you will know I am the Lord. They became poor and Israel became what? So don't ever imagine their journey in the wilderness. They were poor men. Those who are rich people going, carrying wealth. And we are not going to be poor in this world. I know there's a gospel that says if you preach on prosperity, you're preaching something different. I'm not preaching prosperity. I'm telling you God is a God of what? Provision. He will not let you go empty-handed. He will ensure that he provides for you as you trust him. He will make sure there is a distinction between you and the other fellow. Can I make my last point in three minutes? That one, you'll catch it very fast. It's in three minutes. The mark of protection. That's the last one, the mark of protection. I say the first one was the mark of what? The, the second one, the mark of? And the last one is the mark of protection. That is power. Now, I will make a statement here that will surprise you. And I hope you'll understand me. Some people think Canaan was very far away from Egypt. It wasn't. By the way, the Israelites knew Canaan very well. They had been going there and coming back. Some of those were adventurers. Ask me how. How do I know that? Jacob, when he was alive, his sons had gone to Egypt how many times? Those who know the Bible. When they were looking for food. At least twice. The third time is when they went and stayed. Which means Egypt wasn't far. It need, didn't need to take them a whole year walking. In fact, the Bible tells me it was almost a, a journey of probably a month and a few days. I mean, 14 days to cross. They knew the shortcut, the route they were supposed to follow. And God didn't tell Moses, use this route when they were living. No. The first thing God told them, leave. And I'll tell you something, God will tell you, leave. And the moment you are leaving, you are going, then God will determine how, you, how he's going to treat you in the wilderness. So as they were leaving, the Bible tells me, these men took the short route which they knew. The shortest route. It would have taken them 14 days and the guys were in the land of promise. But you know, as they were going, they have already gone. They are somewhere, they have already gone, reached maybe, they have gone, they have reached somewhere where they are now heading towards the place in the shortcut. The Lord says, Apana, I want to make a distinction. 
And the distinction is this. I want them to know I'm a God who can protect them. I'll give them a mark. And this mark will be a mark to demonstrate to them even as they enter that land. I will protect them from their enemies. So when you see things going on wrong in your life, don't question God. I think we were told here by Pastor Wengam. Sometimes forgive God. Because he knows he's preparing that to show you, to prove to you that you are a person of his own choice. When you are in a fix, doesn't mean God has left you. When you feel like now there's no money, things are not working, then you begin to say, but Pastor Mlema said God is a God of provision. No, 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 no. He's fixing you to, prov- to show you he can take care of you. Amen. You didn't hear me? Amen. Can I tell you? Look at this scripture. I love this one. Look at chapter 14, Exodus, verse 1 to verse 4. I'm just about to end. Chapter 14, verse 1 to verse 4. God made a mark of protection in this chapter. Says, then the Lord said to Moses, can you read with me? Don't read the Bible differently. Read the way it is written. It says, tell the people of Israel to do what? Which means they had, done, they had gone, isn't it? When you say turn back, it means what? You're going where? It means you are returning. They had already crossed the mark, the place where they were supposed now to begin entering the land. Then it says turn back. The same night, turn back and go back. Then they began going back. Where? Let's read together. It says turn back. And then camp in front of Piharoth, between Migdol and the sea, in front of Beth, whatever. You shall encamp there facing it by the sea. He's telling them, go back. They went back, back to Egypt. And he says, look, the sea is like this. There's a mountain here. There's another mountain here. You go and camp in front of the sea. Is, does God really care? That, those are the questions we ask. The route they were using, there was no sea. Are you getting my point? God was going to give them a mark of protection. He was simply wanting them to see how he can protect them. And I can tell you, the things we go through are simply to show us how wonderful our God is. This corona thing has just shown us how God can protect us. Somebody called me and asked me, why is it that people in Africa are not dying? I say it's because Africa, God loves us. And God has proved to us that he has given us bodies that can resist. <laughs> My bishop called me yesterday, Bishop Mukuba. He's telling me we've been locked. He's in Maryland. Been locked here. We can't even go out. We can't do everything. I told Bishop, but for us, we are free. We are walking everywhere. <laughs> God doesn't make a mistake. He knows. He knows. He can give you the technology to make medicines, vaccines. But you know, Africa, we don't have the technology. So the vaccines will just come. <laughs> we are just waiting for them to come. Then, but our immunity doesn't even need them. Let them come just to boost them. But we are fine. So he does not do anything for no. He has put us in Africa. There's a, I'm a Tufungia in Chile and it was the dark continent. But can you see how, how much he has protected us in the dark continent? The light continent, he has left them. But look at how they are suffering. I hope they're not listening to me and they're saying Pastor Mlema is condemning. I'm not condemning you. I'm simply telling you, even in that light co- continent, can I look at the camera? The Lord loves you. If you have the mark of the blood, you have the mark of, help me here, provision, I can assure you even the mark of protection is upon you. If you are born again, no corona for you in that land. So let's not be afraid. We should not be afraid. Can I finish my scriptures here? Listen to what he says here, facing it. Can you go to the next verse? I want to finish this. Because I'm, if, if I'm done with this, I'm done. I'm done. I know I'm in with, with the two, three minutes. He says this, for Pharaoh, can you help me? For Pharaoh, will do what? Will say. He's telling Moses. He's not telling the people. Pharaoh will say. So Moses, when he was camping there, God, Moses understood what God had said. This is why Moses stood and he told the people, don't be afraid. Don't worry. Don't fear. You know, when we pastors tell you, don't be afraid, some of you don't even believe us. Pastor Simon is gone. Some of you are afraid. Pastor Simon used to pray for me. I, let, me don't, let me tell you, don't be afraid. There are more prayer warriors here than Pastor Simon. You didn't hear me. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> when something happens, we are so much afraid. He told them, look, Pharaoh will say to the people, they are wandering in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. Can you go to the next verse? Look at the next, next verse. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart and they will pursue them. And I will get glory. Can somebody say hallelujah to that? Over Pharaoh and his host. And the Egyptians, that's the word I want you. The Egyptians will do what? Shall know that I am the Lord. I love that. They will know. You know when he says, I'll make a distinction. He says that they will know. 
did you, did you look at that scripture, the distinction one? What did he say, the distinction? He says, I will make a distinction between you, yeah, that, they, that you may know the Lord makes a distinction. The Lord makes a distinction. I will make a distinction between you and them. God wanted to make a display of his power. He would have just left them. Angewacha, by the way, Angewacha. So they have left them go. He would have simply said, ah, let the Egyptians remain. You continue. But he told them, turn. Ah, he changed his mind. Ah, I'll go and fix them. Even as he was fixing them there, he was telling them, I want you to know there are moments when fear will come. But in the midst of that fear, I am the Lord. Amen. And that will introduce me to the next someone I'll be talking about later on. Which someone has, people have pressed me to share. On Isaiah. The three, the five piece. All right? Because when things begin to happen, people fear. They are afraid. The church becomes afraid. Oh, we don't know why this is happening. We don't know why this year has been like this. We don't know why this has... Let me tell you, do not be afraid. Sometimes God displays his power. He wanted Israel to see his power. Believe me. He wanted Israel to experience his power. Let me just finish my last scripture. Here, please, my brethren. Look at chapter 14, please, very quickly. Chapter 14 and verse 13 to verse 14. 14, 13 to 14. Exodus, Exodus 14, 13 to 14. Then we'll stand up, I'll make a prayer, and you will leave. Okay? Are we there with you? Chapter 14, Exodus. Are you there? Listen to what the Bible says. And Moses said to the people, when they saw now they are fixed. In other words, God has put you in a corner where you have no money, where you do not know what to do. The enemy is pursuing you. Sickness is coming. Yet Pastor Mlema preached about provision. Yet there is no food on your table. The Lord is speaking to you. He's telling you, I am a God who will protect you. The mark is this. I will protect you. This is what I believe. See the politics in this nation. Even if things became bad, me, I believe God will make a distinction Amen. between those who are his and those who are not his. If you belong to God, he will protect you. Amen. He will take care of you. But if you make a mistake to belong to them, you are done. Moses said to the people, and this is what I speak to you now. He says, fear not. Can somebody say fear not? Fear. Stand firm. And see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, God wanted them to see the Egyptians for the last time. He says, this man you see today, you shall never see them again. Can I tell you, for that trouble that is coming your way that you are seeing, you will never see it again. For the fear of that issue in your life, that job that you've lost, that baby that actually has been a, has been a problem for you to, fight, to get, I can tell you, you will never see it again because I'm the God who protects. He finishes in chapter 14, verse 30 to 31. Jump to verse 30 to 31. He says, for the Lord will fight for you and you have only... I love that. Can you go back to that verse again? I was missing that one. The, the verse that you were just screening there. Look at it. Can you read that with me? The Lord will fight for you, and you, will, you, you have only to do what? You know, there are moments when God doesn't want you to do anything. Oh, Nangalia too. You just watch, and the Lord does it for you. Then, if you jump to the verse I'm giving you now, the final one, that is chapter 14, verse 30, 30, 30, 31. 30, 31. This is what the Bible says Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel. I want you to get this. Israel did what? Saw. Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Continue reading. Continue, continue verse 31. Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord. And they believed in the Lord and in his servant, Moses. That's all God wants. That's, that's the, whole, the whole lesson. You can believe me to take care of you. Can we believe God? Can we trust God? Can we, can we say, Lord, we are trusting you to help us this year? Would you stand up on your feet if you believe? Worship team, come. We've eaten seven minutes in our time. And we don't have much to waste. Thank you. Lift up your hands if you would and just worship him. I want to make a final prayer for you. Lift up your hands and worship him if you would. I don't need to ask you to do anything. 
He's a God, a God who passes you over. A God who, 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 whose grace is sufficient for you. Passover means grace that we have today in the, in the church. He's a God who provides favor. And he's a God who protects power. That's the God we serve. Lift up your hands and give him praise. Just worship him. Thank him for who you are and what he has done for you, if you would. Tell him, Father, this year I'm believing you for three things. Your grace, your favor, and your power. Your grace, your favor, and your power. Your grace, your favor, and your power. This is what I'm trusting God for. Tell him, Father, this morning I'm lifting up my voice to you and my faith to you. I want to believe you, Jesus, to give me the abilities that will cause me to have your grace, your favor, and your power. Your grace, your favor, and your power. That's what we are asking God to do in the name of Jesus. Lord, give your people grace. Give your people power. Give your people favor. In the year 2021, Father, we are asking you, oh God, if you would, help us, dear Father, to put our faith in you. To trust you, dear Lord God. To trust in the words that you are speaking through your servants. To believe that, God, you can do it again. Lord, we pray this morning, restitute back what we had lost in the Garden of Eden. What we had lost in Egypt. What we have lost over the years, my Father. What Israel lost in 430 years. Lord, you gave it back to them on that night of the Passover. I pray this morning, Lord, may your people who are here, people who are listening to this message, Father, respect to them. Minister to them this morning. Allow us, as we go back to our homes, to go with the confidence that God is our God. God is our God. God is our God. God is our God. Give us the confidence to know that you can do it again. Like you did to Israel. We surrender ourselves to you, Lord. Our jobs, our families, our children. Oh God, our, our businesses, my Father. My God and my Lord, our faith, our personal lives, oh God. The things that we yearn for in the year 2021. In the name of Jesus. Father, we pray. Deliver them to us. We give you the praise. And we give you the glory. Father, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you, Jesus.